the 2017 Audi Q7. This is literally the closest thing you can get to be driving around in a private jet. So, welcome to the latest episode of Carbus Unboxing Reviews, and this is, of course, the all-new Q7. But before we get started, we, uh, Carbus wants to thank Neo Audi, which is part of the Neo company, for letting us come on down and uh, film this car for you today. So let's get started. Now, this is the, of course, the second generation Q7. It feels like it's been around forever, this car. Yeah, it actually, the first generation came out in 2005. Yeah. And it was so good. It was on the market for 10 years. Last year. Literally. Long. Yeah, it got a refresh midway through, but... How often do uh, cars switch generations on average? Less than 10 years. Seven, for an example, the Bugatti years? Veyron was around for like a decade. Okay, I had trouble selling so, the last right. few of those. But the normal, normal cars, average cars... Seven years lifespan. Yeah, give or take. Okay, that's ten years right. is quite long. So, but you, you got to remember discount. when you got to remember that when the first Q7 came out, it was unlike pretty much anything. It was this you know three row uber luxury crossover, and it's this was lot, before, it was a lot of money as well. It, was, it, it still is, and, yeah. and and this is that was before the era of the Bentley Bentayga and all that stuff. That's now that we're coming Cayenne? out now. Uh, it was just around the time. Same Actually, time, yeah. right. But it was just a little different. It yeah. had that, you know, that Teutonic Audi touch going. German feel yeah. to it. Well, the Porsche did too, but in a different way. But well, that's more sporty. This is more luxury, right? Right. Exactly. But this looks nicely done out. Yeah. This, I, like I said, this is literally like flying around in a, a, a private jet. This is all black leather interior. And yeah, we've done a few Audis recently, and they all have this high quality they interior They always finish. have. That's, yeah. that's one of the things Audi is just done so consistently well for so long it's right. just they've taken the the level of interior quality just to a higher higher level it's forcing every other automaker at least the german ones to yeah. come up to that it's bar a big old car isn't it yeah big sucker it is remember you know audi has several crossovers now this is a, remember this is a crossover it, right. it is not yes it has the quattro all-wheel drive system but you don't go off-roading in this thing no i, I don't want you to no you shouldn't, because you'll, you'll have problems. You'll probably find some videos of people trying to take off-road, but that's just for fancy pictures. Right. Marketing. Right, precisely. Most of the time you'll see this, you know, in a shopping mall. Right. Exa that's Parks exactly where you'll find Or it. outside kids' schools. Yeah, precisely. Soccer moms with a lot of money. Yeah, not on a track. No. Anyway. But they like this one because it's got three rows. Even though right. the third row is tiny, it is best left for kids. But this is the top end of the Audi Q... Crossover lineup. Remember, you now have the Q2, the Q3. There's talk of a Q8, Q5. right? They might turn this into like a coupe style. I wouldn't surprise me at this point. You know, the Germans are experts at finding a niche for every single car yeah. that we didn't ask for. Yeah, I don't want to just see look at that. the BMW X6. Yeah, exactly. That's a horrible. Car. <laughs> it's yeah. horrible. Yeah. What an ugly car that is. Yeah. But you'll see how comfortable he's here. Look how big it is. He's oh. a big guy, and he just sits right in there. Yeah, it's just very comfortable. It's just such a nice place to be. And yeah. I love oh, this dash. Look at that pop up. Yeah. It's better than BMW Mercedes is stuck there. Really? Yeah. Well, I think it's it's nice when it pops up. I, right. like, I like the fact it's nice and clean when it when it's, uh, the car's off. Actually, this whole dash is just nice and clean. Look at that. Yeah. It's just... One big sweeping yeah. design there. Right. And we did that recent review of the uh, A8 and yeah. the A4 and you saw the difference in those generations because the yeah. A8 is old and the A4 is brand new yeah. and you just see how far Audi has come Yeah. and under the hood so this is so far the only engine that you can get in this car it's a 3 liter V6 with 333 horsepower and 325 pound feet of torque it's paired to an 8 speed automatic it's not a dual clutch it's the Titronic transmission and sends power to all four wheels, hence the name Quattro. So that's the only engine they offer in the US. <laughs> Whether you can offer a diesel? Well, <laughs> maybe not, but no like way. A, a more powerful engine or light? Eventually yeah. a plug-in hybrid is uh, is on the way. Right, okay. But yeah, well, for now... Everything's going that way, right. isn't it? But this is just a fantastic engine. You makes, know, it I makes buying it easy enough, though, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. There's one engine, choice, one, engine one, one engine, one transmission. Keep, keep it easy. Well, let's listen to it for a sec here. Yeah, that's just, yeah. if there's one thing that I think that this new Q7 really stands out for, aside from all the luxury stuff, is that engine. Yeah. It's just It's quite stately from the back as well. It does. It's like a grand vehicle. Yeah. It is. A, it, this is a big sucker. Yeah. This is big. 
Now, this is cool. I like how they do these pop-up screens, how they just sort of, like, hide away in the dash. Yeah. This is an 8.3-inch screen, it, and it's got uh, all your basic controls for a Bose uh, premium audio system, head-up display, you name it. That yeah, it looks pretty intuitive. It is right. Straightforward to use. Now, this is not even the fully loaded Q7. This oh, is yeah. actually the mid-range one. You have the Premium, Premium Plus, and the Prestige. This is the Premium Plus. So one step down from the Prestige. Right. Okay. So if you, when we get to pricing in a few minutes, anyone who thinks this is expensive, just wait. Okay. And it's, it's just amazing how all these extra features Audi is offering that we didn't even think of. Right, so why would you go for this over a Porsche Cayenne then? They're both similar, you know, high premium Well, this has makers. a third row. Okay. And also, reason. this is built, the Q7 here, it is built on the same platform as the Bentley Bentayga. And, and, the, and the Tiguan, right? No, Torek, the Tiguan. sorry. The Touareg. The VW Touareg. That's built on the same platform as the Porsche Cayenne. So I thought those, the Bentayga. Those two were platform. Made. So this is say, one same platform for this the Bentayga This is the Bentayga, well. right. Now, what Volkswagen Group is doing is they're saying, okay, we're going to have our larger SUVs that are capable of having a third row. Yeah. And then we're kind of, uh, and it's a, it's a flexible platform. Okay. So they can quickly downsize it here and there. But right now, Q7 and Bentayga, yeah. same platform. But Bentley will probably bring out another SUV, won't they? Like a smaller one at some point. It's a good question. First, Bentley is going to be coming out with the diesel version. Yeah, that which was Which we know that's that coming. Trivial, so, yeah. Right. So that'll happen first. And I wouldn't be surprised if Bentley does. But Audi doesn't need to come out with more crossovers. No. They already have Audi a full doesn't. lineup. I mean, the Q1 is pretty ridiculous. The Q1? Q1, you mean the Q2? No, they're going to bring out a Q1. They are? Yeah, that's well. Oh my goodness. I wouldn't be surprised, yeah. The Q2 is out, right? The Q2, yeah, that just came out. That's the newest one. The Q3 is the is actually pretty old. And the Q5 is about to be completely redesigned. The debut will happen at the Paris Motor Show. Yeah, that's coming out yeah. tomorrow, like this week. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it'll probably look like every other Audi. Yep, yeah, they'll look the it's same. Like they all look the same. That's what people want. Audi buyers yeah. want the Ah, same. but check this panoramic sunroof. Oh, it's huge. It's massive. It Guess what? That. But get this. To Audi's credit, that sucker's standard. Don't pay extra for that? You don't have to pay extra for that. Wow, that is massive. Look, yeah, look, look at that. It's open up. Wow. Like I said, it's, it is like a private jet. You can probably stand out. You know, you stand up through that. You could put an ejection yeah, seat in the back and like go right through the roof and be wow. okay. That is a monster. This whole thing is a monster. Yeah. That is an awesome feature. It is. Say. And actually, to Audi's credit, that because this rides on a uh, brand new platform, they did a lot of weight savings compared to the first generation Q7. So a lot of aluminium in the build? Exactly. They claim they've cut around 700 pounds. Wow, that's a lot. Which is a lot. But yet, this that's is like still weight. That's like two big Americans. Yeah. Well, right. Well, it can fit several big Americans. So that means you know, if you're buying this, you can afford to put on a bit of weight. And, well, look, just uh, put, it, your put into reference here: a V8 powered Grand Cherokee weighs a little bit more. Oh yeah. Yeah. Not okay. much, a couple hundred pounds more, but you're it's roughly in the same neighborhood here. So five thousand pounds is not completely yeah an ordinary. Look at that. Ah. Uh, Audi does great LED signature lights. That's in it. fact, with the R8, what do you think of that grill though? It's a bit of a fat grill. It looks the it? same as all the Audi grills. They just yeah. can't get away from the same design. Yeah, I know. I like the back end actually. It is nice. It's quite handsome. But I will say that this second generation Q7, it looks kind of wagon-like. A little you more think? so. Yeah. But look yeah, at okay. that though. Oh, I love this. This Audi's uh, MMI information screen. Right. This is a 12.3 inch LCD screen. Right, you know, as part of the gauge cluster you don't for the need, driver. Oh, wow, look, look at, at that. that. Wow. But you don't need to be playing around that without your driving that, do you? Well, look, it's better than looking over oh, to the center dash. That's a lot of options there. Look, look at that. that, yeah. That is fantastic. It's like, what, you can control satellites with that? Looks Literally, like, yeah, yes. Yeah, looks like it. So that's that's going to be the future, isn't it? You can imagine a Q7 in 5, 10 years, it's autonomous. That, that screen will just turn into some 3D hologram and you'll be able to just play around. Have right, fun. well, actually, this is already starting to slowly that, gear towards yeah, autonomous. It's got this adaptive cruise control that'll pair the navigation oh, he can, system he and Google Maps. He can literally sleep in that chair. Why not? He could park up. Like that, I said, this is like flat. a private jet. Yeah. Why, why not take a nap? Yeah, I that, mean, when you're not driving. That went completely flat, that chair. That is cool. Oh, man. it is. He looks like he's just chilling in there. You're supposed to chill. Effortless. Effortless driving in this thing. But it's pretty quite sporty as well to drive, no? And that's what I think Audi has also done really well here, is that they, they know this is a big rig. Right. And they've done a lot of suspension tuning, so for that, when you do take it around tight corners, yes, you're still going to know you're in a crossover compared to, say, 
a sedan or a smaller yeah. sedan. Or a hatch, yeah. But this does not roll as much as you would think. It's really well yeah. controlled. That's what they've done a lot of good work on the last decade or so, these SUVs. Well, they have to, because yeah. remember those little, they, the, the Isuzu Troopers, that they, back people in the 90s, they were, they were tipping over. Yeah, they weren't, people they weren't were so that confident driving heavy. them, were they? Well, no, they were just top heavy. And so ever since then, automakers are like, well... <laughs> But you can basically get in this and drive this like it was a normal car. Absolutely. You don't have to think too much about it being so big and so heavy. Listen, people who buy this, they're... That's, that's, they, need, know, they need to, they need to be able to yeah, do that. They just, it's, yeah. Just that, drive that it like a normal car. That looks the same as the A8. Do you know, this is quad zone climate control. Two up front, two in the rear. Look at that. They have that in the, in the A8, no? The in same, the A8, yeah. I think they do, yeah. Dual but remember, the, the A8 back. is older. This is much newer That's in case, in case your kids smoke. You can uh, they can light up cigarettes in the back. Yeah, I'm sure everybody wants their kids to be yeah. smoking. What I like about this is you can just go in this thing and just there's just so many buttons to press. That's cool. Yeah, I like that. That that sunshade right there. Yeah, if you're in a sunny place. But or this car doesn't privacy. even come with a rear entertainment system. But you can probably get that though. Oh, right? absolutely. Oh, look at that. That's why the, the, the top of the line prestige look, model. The rear seat. Yeah, uh, that's the second row. Remember, there's a third row. Oh, nice. You can get nice and comfortable back there. Oh, that's that, that's the but whole point. You'd want a TV though, wouldn't comfort. you? If you if you're gonna use this for long if I'm trips, spending this amount of money, yeah, yeah, I want a TV. Where's my TV? Oh, here we go. Let's have a look at it. You got to pay extra for it, but so you got you got to climb in the back. You got to get in the back. That's okay. For little kids, we we'll love doing that. They'll have, but a, for lot, an they'll adult, have a lot of fun. Nah, it's not for adults. Though, is it? No, it's for, it's for well, he's kids. an adult and he's back there. Yeah, but he's, I don't think he's enjoying himself. He's just testing it out. Look. And he's actually, you know, I've seen him in a more cramped position before, like back back of the Mustang. It was more. But that's that a probably. Ford Mustang. Yeah, man. but still, you know, he can get in there. But yeah, that's for well, two nice kids in the, the back. That's yeah, for like that, that people like row four, five kids, two kids who are young. They easily. can get back And in that there. second row was nice because it just it's easy to fall flat even from the third row, so you yeah. can get out. Let's see the electronic lift gate. Yeah, gates. no doubt there's plenty of space in here. Oh yeah. Check that out. More kids can get in there if you need to. Right, and then once you fold down the, especially the third row seats, which I think most people are going to be doing. Right. Yeah. Because. They won't How often them. do you need? You're yeah, gonna you have so much space in this thing. Again, it depends. If you've got a family of four or five kids, you have it permanently up. Otherwise, you won't. Right. Well, right here, this is 15 cubic feet of cargo room. Yeah. This right here, with the three seats. With the with, with the, the three, three seats rows. folded up. Right. With the three rows all up. That's still quite. That's still pretty good. It's not bad, yeah. You can get a couple and of suitcases. And I like this. All there. the electronic stuff. It's like as oh. if it's so hard just to pull a little lever with yeah, your I, hand. I don't want to pull a lever. Look at this. Oh, that's it's so nice. cool, but you know what? I, I, I wonder over time, what if like, those really little cool. electric motors like die? No, nah, they won't. Because unless you're using them every day, they'll last years. That won't be a problem. That'll be a we'll easy, find out that'll in be years. That'll be an easy fix as well. That's Are you kidding? That'll be an expensive Expensive, fix. but it wouldn't be too hard. Just Listen, no matter what, whenever you buy an expensive car, it's always going to have expensive repairs. Yeah, Especially these true. Audis. Sure. Oh, but look at that. Oh, yeah. Man. So that is really how most people are going to be, you know, driving around with that much space. When you really need the space, it's there, and that's. And to Audi's credit, they've they really studied their customers, oh, and they know there's a difference between the Q5 customers and the Q7. The Q5, remember, is only two rows. So what's the difference in the buyers? Well, Q7 buyers probably have more money. Yeah. They're moving up. Yeah. And they want the space because the Q7 step inside of it. Yeah. I'm sorry, the Q5 step inside of it. And you'll see it's not that spacious. So here, you could probably put a mattress down and sleep. Like, if you, like seriously, if you're going on a long road trip, you could bring like a blow-up mattress. But what about the rest of the people? And you could no, you, this is two you people. You could sleep outside. It's two people. You could use that for a cross-country trip. Never have to pay for accommodation. Probably. Blow up mattress. Put it in there. Be kind of like a hobo driving around in your uh, Audi Q7. Bob's your uncle, yeah. Wake up, have a shave, have some breakfast. At a out. truck stop bathroom. Yeah. yeah. You go shaving there, then you hop in yeah. your Audi Q7. Exactly. Look. Yeah, that'll look totally normal. That'd be cool. Someone should try that. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, I want to hear how that goes. Yeah. But look at this exterior. I mean, look, the, the front end, Audi has a brand new cheap designer. Yeah. And this... It's a bold the, the, front end. Right, right. This car was already designed by the time he took over, so he had no influence on it. We'll start seeing new Audi designs from, from him. I met him in Geneva. You spoke to him in right. Geneva, and what was he saying? That he's uh, got a few new ideas. Because you said to him, basically, why do all Audis look the same? Yeah, well, I was looking at the new R8, and I asked him, why and does it look like, so much like the... this is not my fault, Jay. Yeah? I'm not in charge of Audi then. So Pretty much, right. So we'll see some fresh designs, but... But right now, this is, this is what it is, and look, at the first generation Q7, 
I liked it. I mean, it was big, yeah, but it, it was, was a sleek. Nice car. Yeah. But in order to... And it was to, new as well. It was a new right, thing. So everyone was like, oh, what is this? You know, you know, BMW didn't Massive even have Audi. something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, that's why. BMW is going to be coming out with, I believe, going to be like the X7. But cause like the you X5. say, because the, the generation, first generation did so well. They yeah. Did, they didn't mess with but it too much. But look at this. It looks but, much more like a big wagon. I see what you're saying, yeah. It's, it's kind of boxier. A bit longer. It feels, right. feels longer than boxy. Right. Precisely. And with the th- again, the, 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 they needed to get space. Yeah. That was this big... That's one of the big selling points for this. More space, less weight. Correct. More power. They had to make it bigger, more powerful. And way don't less. mess with the design too much because everyone liked it. Well, they did much. sort of mess with the design. It, like I said, this is more wagon. Like if you compare the two, the first and second generation side by side, yeah, you're gonna see that this is definitely more boxy. Yeah. I mean, they did a good job, but you know, with the you know that that belt line going uh, just above the door handles yeah. and the rear hump. That's a nice I line. I think that's nice. Yeah, it's a good line. But if you just look at the overall silhouette, it's a huge it's, yeah. scene. Look at that. Panoramic roof. Yeah. Mm. I love those things so much. Such a beast. You know, they don't even have something like that in an $80,000 Toyota Land Cruiser. Right, okay. So how much is this then? Come on. Let's get okay, pricing. pricing. Everybody wants to know pricing. Yes. So Come a on. base Q7, the, the premium package. What, premium package is their base level package. Right. That starts off at about just under $55,000. Now, our car is the Premium Plus mid-range, and that starts off at $58,800. But this car has several features. The Premium Plus package alone costs $4,000. You get the upgraded nav screen, Audi Connect, smartphone interface, LED interior lighting. Then you have the Vision package for $2,000. That is a virtual cockpit, full LED lights, and a top view camera system. I was expecting it to be more than that. That's actually not too bad. Well, all in, yeah. this car right here, including a $950 destination fee, $65,655. Okay, that's, that's a bit more. Right. Like and the Prestige, the top of the line, that starts at just under sixty five. Okay, so if I've, if I've got that sort of money, I'm looking for a car like this, what else can I get? Well, you have... Several choices: the Mercedes Benz GLS class. Okay. That, like, again, that can go up to about ninety-five thousand yeah, dollars if you really nice want. Car. Yeah. There's the Acura MDX. Pass. Pass. Yeah. A little. It's okay. That. But that's a pretty good value. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Fair, Forty-four thousand fifty. Yeah. Fifty-eight. Fifty-seven thousand. Something like that. Fifty-eight fully loaded. Right. It's not bad. You have the Lexus GX. Now okay. I've always liked that because that is a true body on frame. Yeah, it's a serious SUV. Right? SUV. This yeah. is more a crossover. Uh, there's also, well, I would say BMW, but the biggest thing SUV BMW builds, sorry, SAV, because it's BMW, yeah. is the Q5 at the moment. X, sorry, X5. So they haven't got something no, else. No, they're, they're, so X7 is supposedly on the way. BMW doesn't have something. Well, um, they will. And the Volvo XC90? That's a great car, yes. That People also have been starts loving, off loving that, that. Car. that is great. That starts yeah. off at around 45000 We need to review that. Yeah, we got to get that. Yeah. But you can pay up to like seventy two grand for a Volvo, which is like, that's an expensive Volvo. Yeah. But, you know, the, the difference, though, is that Audi has been in the three-row crossover business since 2005. So it's got It knows start, what yeah. it's doing. Yeah, yeah. And there's, you know, if you look at here, look at from that, this angle, you can see some Bentley Bentayga. There is a you little really bit You really can, yeah. yeah. But the point, though, is that... But the Bentley Bentayga is, what, an extra 150 grand? Yeah, something crazy like And you're not like getting... That. It's not four right. or five times the car, is it? It's just no, prestige. No, no, not at all. Um, but listen, the point though is that if people don't think that this Q7 is good enough, yeah, well, there's the Bentley Bentayga yeah. now, and then and it's be, all part of the Volkswagen. And then group. there'll be the Lamborghini Urus as well. Well, that's gonna be very different. That's gonna be a real Porsche Cayenne. But it's butter, still yeah. still a big expensive SUV. So anyway, everyone, we're out of time today. Thanks for watching. Any more questions? Leave them for us in the comments, and we'll see you next time. Take it easy. Bye.